The NCAA's March Madness Tournament is approaching its climax with the Final Four games scheduled for this weekend. Those matchups feature top-seeded UConn facing off against fourth-seeded Alabama and the 11th-seeded NC State taking on the number one seed, Purdue. But it's the women's Final Four with Iowa's Caitlin Clark that is stealing the show tonight. Joining us right now is Abe Madcor. He is Sports Business Journal Executive Editor. And Abe, this has been pretty unbelievable. The numbers that we've seen for the ratings with the women's basketball to this point, I, I think one of the elite eight games last weekend actually topped ratings for the final game of the World Series on television. I mean, this is uncharted territory for what we've seen. Absolutely, Becky. It's so exciting. And the interest and the energy around women's basketball at the college level, unlike anything we've seen, the numbers tonight should be great for ESPN. And then on Sunday, if you do get that uh, that matchup that everybody's hoping for, Iowa, South Carolina, on Sunday afternoon, you will see record viewership numbers. So it's incredibly exciting, Becky. What does that mean just from a business perspective? What, now that you have these sorts of numbers, in the past it's always been like, oh, the women can't draw the viewers and that's why they make less, that's why there's less focus on all of this. This is really changing the entire business dynamic. Yeah, you're right, because you're seeing it around iconic players and Caitlin Clark, Angel Reese, Paige Beckers. They're driving interest and viewership in the business of sports right now, Becky, it's all anybody's talking about. In terms of long-term implications, you're going to see them go into the WNBA, and so it could be a huge boost for that league once they get drafted into that league. But it's not just in women's college basketball, Becky. You're seeing it at the NWSL. You're seeing it with Professional Women's Hockey League. You're seeing it with volleyball as well. So just a real influx of investment and energy in women's sports. I'm glad you brought up other players like Paige Beckers because I, I think there are some people who think this is simply a Caitlin Clark phenomenon. I don't think it is. I, I don't. It's not. And the quality of play is so high level and the caliber of talent so, so good that people are watching women's college basketball really for, for, for many for the first time, very casual fans. But now they're getting very hooked. And you're going to see incredible energy in Cleveland this weekend around all these teams. And so you're absolutely right. It's not about one person or one player. The entire game is being elevated. Abe, I um, stayed up late last night to watch the NIT finals. That was a phenomenal oh. finish between oh. Indiana State and Seton Hall. I mean, down to the wire, every play back and forth, the turnovers. I mean, I'm watching because my son plays basketball, but I think a lot of other people are watching because of the potential for gambling involved with this and how that has raised excitement on a lot of different levels. How has that changed sports overall? I think it's changed sports overall for the better, mostly. And I do think, to your point, it's driven interest. And I know that's what the sports industry had hoped, that more people who had some stake in the games would be more engaged in the games and stick around as viewers for a longer period of time. You're seeing increased betting. In fact, when, when you talk about women's college basketball, I believe Monday night's Iowa game was the most bet women's college basketball mm -hmm. game ever. So you're seeing handles rise. Now, there's always ethical concerns and integrity concerns, and you're starting to see a few more of those, Becky, and that has everybody concerned in terms of where this is going. But so far, I think it's certainly increased interest and attention into sports. Yeah, we've seen kids as young as 18 who are playing on some of these teams who get caught up thinking they're making a few casual bets and have really been punished pretty harshly. The other big question is the money with the NIL. Um, it's great. I think the players should be getting some share of this, but it has kind of destroyed teams. It seems like every year your entire team goes into the portal, and as fans, you're not really rooting for the same thing you used to be anymore. What does this mean for the NCAA? Because I think there are serious questions about what the NCAA's future is. No, you nailed it. It's, it's something that they're spending a lot of time on to try to fix. It's not gone the path that they thought it would, Becky. And so they're trying to get some more uh, framework and regulation around it. Some will say it's too late. And you're absolutely right. It's led to a lot of uncertainty and chaos within college sports. And nobody likes it. Administrators don't like it. Coaches certainly don't like it. The players are benefiting, as they should. Everybody agrees that name, image, and likeness in concept is a good concept. It's just the execution that has been, I think, uh, probably mismanaged, and now the NCAA is trying to get their arms around it better, maybe through Congress, maybe through their own efforts, but we'll see this continuing to evolve.
Hey, very quickly, you got a, a pick for tonight with the women's. Uh, you think it'll be UConn? You think it'll be Iowa State? I'm not going to pick, Becky. I'm just going to hope for some close games, and I hope that everybody watches because it's going to be historic and very special.